Hey guys, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you the first steps of how to program our Space Invaders app. So at the moment, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. I've just gone into preview so I can show you. I've got my ship, I've got my aliens, I've got a shoot button and a slider that is going to control where our player is. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set up the slider. I'm going to program the slider to actually control our ship. It's probably the first thing that's worth doing. So we're going to head over to our blocks. Our blocks are pretty standard blockly stuff, but if you've used Thunkable before but not the canvas, you'll notice that you've got all of these extra blocks here. They're really helpful, particularly for making 2D games. So let's get started with them. The first thing that I need to use though is in slider one, when the value changes. Now, I have actually gone against one of my biggest rules here, and I've not actually renamed my button and slider to be like player slider or button shoot. Something I usually do, but as we've only got one slider and one button, it isn't too important. The main reason I name things is to make sure that they are unique amongst many things. So if I've got three buttons, I need to know which one I'm using. But at the moment, there's only one. So I'm I'm breaking my rule. Okay, slider one. Well, I'm going to grab when the value changes. So when the value changes of slider one, we're going to be moving the X position of our player from left to right. Which means if I go into motion and then set sprites X to be whatever the value is. Now, here's where I have broken one of my rules and I need to go and fix it. If you go into here, you can see that I've got sprite two, three, four, and five. Now, I'm just gonna go back to my design for a bit and have a look at all this. Now, I don't actually, I'm never actually going to control each alien individually because there's ways we can do that by just controlling the entire sprite type. So I'm not going to worry about them. What I need to know, what I need to know is what my player is called. So I'm just going to rename it player. So I've now got player type and player. Okay, now I know what I need to do. I need to set players X to be the value on the, on the slider. Now, Again, here you need to make sure that you set the slider's range to be 0 to 300 because that is the width of our screen. So now we can move our player anywhere on there, theoretically. If I hit live test... Woo! Okay, it's moving left to right. Looks pretty good. Now you can adjust the code or adjust the slider. There's many ways you can do it so that you aren't falling off the edge. But at the moment, I'm fairly happy with that. So yeah, that's cool. Good, good. Now, the next thing I want to do, I would like to set up my lasers. His lasers are cool and I want to I shoot stuff. Okay, so... What is going to happen when we want to shoot a laser? First thing that's going to happen is we're going to click a button. So let's go and grab that click event. In button one, when button is clicked. Cool. When the button is clicked, we are going to add a sprite. We're going to go into add and remove and create, not an alien, but a laser. Cool. That's good. Where do we want to set the laser to be? We want it to be at the player's position. So if we go, I believe it's motion. Yep, here we go. Get the sprite's X position and make sure you set it to be player. I'm then going to duplicate it and make it the player's Y position. Cool. Create a laser at the player's position. And then what are we going to do with it? We need it to shoot. We need it to go pew um, up and at the aliens. So 
hopefully you guys... It's not actually something that I've mentioned yet, but the X position is, of course, left to right. The Y position is, of course, up and down. What you need to know is that the players... No. What you need to know is that all screens in computers are measured from the top left-hand corner. So, if I want something to move upwards, then I need to take away its Y position. Because at the top of the screen, it's going to be zero. The bottom of the screen, it's going to be whatever, however tall your screen is. So, if I want something to go towards the top of the screen, I need to take its speed away. So, I'm going to go in motion... Set the Y speed to be minus 100. Now, I have no idea if minus 100 is a good number. All I know is that minus part will be correct. Now, I'm going to make sure that I set this component's Y speed to that. So, we're going to make this laser. And then we're going to set its Y speed to be minus 100. That should be all the code we need to get our players shoot, to get our lasers shooting. Hit live test. Give it a pew. Cool. Okay. Two things that I'm noticing there. It's a little slower than I'd like. It is creating it at the right spot. It is actually creating it right inside it. So if I really wanted to, I could probably adjust it a little bit. I might do that, actually. And it's not destroying itself at the end. Okay, so now I've got three jobs. I need to make it destroy itself when it hits the top. I need to make it go faster. And I'm going to try to make sure the laser creates itself at the top of the spaceship instead of in the middle of it. So, I think, theoretically, our spaceship is 50 pixels high. So, it's currently creating it in the middle of it. If I want it to go at the top, I'm going to take away half of its height. So, in math, I'm going to grab this block here. I'm going to do, oh, not the X position, oops. I'm going to do the player's Y position minus 25. And we'll see how that goes. I'm not going to test it yet, though. Okay, let's try minus 300 for the speed. And let's test that. Let's see how that goes. Okay, it looks like it's coming out right where I wanted it to. That looks good. Now, I just need to change where, how it destroys itself. Also, you can see that I'm pretty happy with that speed now. I think that's nice. You can adjust that to be whatever you like, but I think that'll do for me at the moment. Okay, making it remove itself. Now... The canvas events are really helpful for these sorts of things. So you can say when the canvas loads do something, when the alien is clicked do something, when the when a type collides with another type do something. That's going to come into it later. What we're looking for at the moment is when the type collides with any edge. Now, it's not going to be any edge. It's going to specifically be the top edge. And of course, it won't be the alien type. It's going to be the laser type. So, when the laser collides with the top edge, we are going to destroy the laser. Okay, I'm going to go into this here, add and remove. I'm going to go remove whatever sprite just hit the top edge. Easy enough line. Easy enough block. All you need. Cool. Shoot. Gone. Awesome. Gotta be pleased with that.
Okay, so that's looking really good. There's only two more things that we really need to program to make the game really feel like it's working. And they are, we need to make the aliens move and come down at us. And we also need our lasers to be able to destroy the aliens. So I'm going to save that for the next video. I'll see you there. Um, enjoy, feel free to make any and all improvements, alterations, design choices that you want. It is your game. So yeah, have fun. Cheers.